Welcome back to another reading and correcting with me, Kindar, the Tiger Rights, and Ty, the Tiger Supervisor. These are where I read a chapter from one of my stories and correct it as I go. If you want to listen to them live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. And if you want to support me, that is on my Patreon. Today, we are doing Chapter 12 of Fractured Families. Tristan stared in worry at the circlet around his bicep. How long had, it been, had he been at it? How long had he been here? It couldn't have been very long. He was still on his knees, and they weren't hurting. The guards were the same one as before. He growled. What the? Hmm. He growled. Why didn't it? Why didn't it have anything for him to slip a claw in? He was wasting his time. He couldn't do anything about it, so he had to move on to something he could do, he could actually do. The bracelets around his wrist and ankles were also one piece, but there was play in them. He could spin them around, but they wouldn't move up or down. He cursed as someone whispered something indistinct. No, whispered it again. He ignored it. He had to focus. His claw slipped into the gap between the bracelet and and the part adhered to his arm, but both part were metal, and he couldn't make a mark or catch his claw in, in on anything. He stood with a huff in annoyance, and the, and the guard became alert. He ignored them and their whispering, let them say whatever they wanted. They wouldn't get a, rea a reaction from him. Why did the bracelet? Why did the bracelet have to spin? He looked at the wall. They were what had held them there, so. Magnetic. He went to the wall and to the wall, studied it. He couldn't see where the corresponding electromagnet was, and even knowing it, the area where he'd been held, the work had been done on the other side, which meant this wall couldn't be thick in places. If he could find wherever the magnet was, he'd have the weak point. He started tapping the wall to get a sense of how thick it was. He spun, reaching for a throat. No one. There had been someone there. He'd felt them. That felt their breath on his ear as they whispered something he hadn't understood. Where had they gone? How had they moved so fast? How had they moved that fast? The door to the cage hadn't opened. He would have noticed that sound. So there had to be another way in and out. They had to be close, so it couldn't be far. They had been close, so it couldn't be far. He ran a finger along the wall. If there was a door, there would be a seam. It didn't matter how thin it was, he would find it. Then he would escape and Justin would pay. He spun again. Again, the whisperer was gone. He'd been on the other side, so he'd missed the door. Four people were whispering, but they were far, where the guards were standing. Maybe further. No, that didn't work. He backtracked, going slower. That, it had to be there, somewhere. Someone chuckled. Shut up! He growled. Thurston cursed and made a fist, which meant his fingers had left the wall. He could have missed the seam. He, the chuckle came back, and he forced himself to ignore it. He needed to find the door. They were laughing at him. He could tell. He couldn't make out the words. Not quite. But it was about him, about what he was doing, mocking him. What a roar! He ran for the cage wall. The cage... He ran for the cage wall, for the bars. He ran for the bars. For the bars, for the guards behind it. His tether stopped and pulled him back. Stop laughing at me. I will kill you all. Do you hear me? The guards were pale, terrified of him. Good. That would keep them quiet. He looked up. Do you hear me, Justin? I will find that door, and I will hurt you. I will take it all away from you again. You should have left us alone. He stalked to the wall, tried to find where he'd been, and continued searching. They began laughing again. He turned, and the guards were still against the wall, still scared. Where are they? He yelled. The laughter increased. Where are they hiding? He walked towards the guards, stopped the limit of the stutter. Where? Are they? You. Okay, so this is Chain. Where are they? He whispered. Tell me where they are, and I'll spare you. 
He plastered his ears back to keep the laughter from seeping into his mind, from driving him insane. You don't have to be afraid of them. I'll kill them first. They won't hurt you. He, the guard looked confused. Tell me! They jumped. The older one took a step back, pretended, took a step forward, pretending courage. I, no one's laughing. Tristan smiled, showed his teeth, and the men recoiled. You don't have to lie to me. I'll protect you from them. I'll even protect your two playthings. Keep you all safe. I swear we don't. It's my brother, isn't it? What did he promise you? He won't keep his promise. He lies. He lies more than I do. Everything he says is a lie. Whatever he promised, he won't do it. I will. Tell me where are where tell me where where they are. Just more confused. Just more confusion from them. They were good actors, better than he, and better than any he'd encountered. But he knew they were lying. They were part of this. Just they were. They were Justin's pawns. He had to get to Justin to end this. He eyed the door to the cage. That was the exit. He had to reach it, then get out. He had to remove the cuffs. He looked at the one on his left wrist and he paced along the end of his tether. Had it had been put on, so there was a way to remove it. There was always a way. Which model was this? He knew it. He knew he'd taken it apart. He found one of the joints, almost a perfect fit. His claw wouldn't slip in, but he could feel well both halves connected. He turned it around and struck out at the person who spoke in his ear. His fist struck the wall and pain ran up his arm. He didn't react to the pain. He wouldn't show them any weakness. You will not break me, he grumbled to his absent brother. Father couldn't, and you will never be as terrifying as he was. Focused on the one, on one of the voices. He couldn't make out the words, but the tone, the cadence, they were familiar to him. They had to be. This person knew him, he could tell. He looked around. They couldn't have gone far, the coward. He would find them, and he would take them. Eratus! He looked at the cuff. That was who made these, which meant he was wrong. There weren't two halves connected together. That seam had been for the cover. All he had to do was remove it, and he'd have access to the control module. With that overloaded, they would, these would be useless piece of metal instead of restraints. Yes, he knew he'd worked on them. He reached for his belt and his felt fur. He was naked. He didn't have any tool. They laughed at him again, and he glared at the guards. I knew it, he told them. I was just distracted. It isn't like I'm not used to being naked, unlike you. I don't need to cover myself. You're the ones who can't stand being naked. Let them be ashamed of what they were. He didn't have time to waste on that. He had more important things to do. Show yourself, coward. Come and laugh at me in my, at my, to my face. See how much you like it, glared the guard. What about you? Do you want to laugh at me, too? They shook their head. You're lying. I know you want to. I know you're just, you're just doing it when my back's turned. We're not. Tristan locked eyes with a young man, and he turned white. And he turned wild. Turned white. It doesn't matter how good you are. I know you're laughing, too. He straightened. It doesn't matter. You're all going to die anyway. He turned and headed to the wall. He sat against it and studied the cuff. Now that he knew who made it, he could... Who had made it? He couldn't have forgotten already. He'd known it only seconds ago. Had figured it out. He cursed. Who was it? He could figure it out again. He studied the cuff. Felt along the seam. Searched for the, the other one. Where had... There had to be another one. When he got bored of it, he studied the other one. Didn't learn anything new, so he moved to the ankle cuff. They kept mocking him. Mocking his determination to beat them. To win. To survive. I will survive, he told himself. His eyes closed and snapped open. He couldn't sleep. Escape. He had to escape. Reach the door. Make Justin pay. He rested his head against the wall and thought. He would find a way out. That whispers. That whisper. Almost rec he almost recognized that something he almost understood. It was the kind of thing he always said to Tristan. Never once had he, had he been complimentary. 
It didn't matter how hard Tristan tried. Even if he'd succeed, put down. Always put down. His head snapped up and pain shook the tiredness of it. He'd almost fallen asleep, he noted as he rubbed the back of his head. He couldn't do that, though he wasn't sure why, other than it was bad. Tristan got to his feet and stepped the air. The laughter redoubled, but he ignored it. He wasn't trying to hit one of them. This was practice training. He had to get the blood pumping to keep himself awake until he came up with a way to get them. To get out of there, out of here. Someone snorted. Not a whispered snort at the edge of his hearing. Something loud. I got to say, boy, I don't think you're up to that task. Tristan froze. He couldn't be here. Really? The voice says. And why would that be? Oh, right, you think. He chuckled. Yeah. Who's surprised you screwed that up to? Who's surprised you screwed that up? Cautiously, he turned. The Somalian standing before him was a couple of inches shorter, just in height. His, pur his fur was pale gray with dark swirl through it. Not the dark brown of Tristan's fur. He and Justin took their coloring from their mother. He remembered her fur. You're dead. The Somalian felt himself. I don't feel dead. You were dead. I checked. I'd never have left you alive to come after me. He tilted an ear. Really? So you think you're the only one clever enough to play dead? Tristan snorted. You were never that clever. So you think I taught you everything I knew? Tristan stepped to him. Yes. You were so desperate to show how great you were. But all you knew... But all you knew... Of... All you knew... But all you knew was delivering pain and misery. He grabbed the man by the neck. He didn't bother squeezing. It wouldn't do any good. I took everything you could give me. I learned everything you had to teach. He placed a thumb under the muzzle between the two solid bones there and pressed. The man began struggling, trying to breathe. He grabbed at Tristan's arm, hit it, clawed at it. And then you killed me the man said from behind. Tristan spawn. How's that working out for you? He wasn't holding him anymore. How? You keep thinking you're smarter than anyone else, boy. That's your problem. You thought you could kill me because you had nothing left to learn from me. No, you stood in my way. That's why you died. I told you to go back to Justin. Told you to go and to go take care of him and let me leave. You had nothing for me anymore. Is that so? The clang of the cage door resounded through the air. Tristan jumped, searched around, and felt the bars pressed against him. Then it was gone. There was ample space between him and the bars. Seemed to me I still have one thing for you. It's a trick. You're dead. The Somalian tilted an ear. Tristan looked up. I know you're doing this, Justin. Oh, please. A new voice said behind him. Stop it already with the blaming me for everything? Tristan stepped sideways, then turned to look at both of them. How had Justin entered the cage without making a sound? No. When had its father shut it? That clang. That was when. He'd done it to distract him. He saw the guards studying him, looking perplexed. They probably hadn't figured out how his brother and father had made it inside the cage. Let them wonder. I've never blamed you for anything. Really? Just interrupt the word, making a mockery of it, of, of it, making it a mockery of itself. And why is it exactly that you sent me here? Come on, help me out. No, then let me refresh your memory. I got stuck on one of these two, in one of these twos because you, wait for it, blame me for getting caught. You set it up. Oh, please. Why would I do that? I was nice and busy running my corporation. I didn't think about you. You were the furthest thing from my mind, but you couldn't stand that I hadn't been, that you hadn't been perfect. One merc. That's all it took to catch the great and amusing Tristan. So, of course, it had to be applauded by little old me. No matter what the truth, you had fabricated a trail that led to me. You ran. Tristan looked at him in disbelief. I ran. 
Really? You come gunning for me and you're surprised that I ran? You were leaving dead bodies in your wake. Was I supposed to ju what was I supposed to do? Get up a get a pot of coffee going? Put out little morsel of nutrient bars on a platter? Of course I ran, you idiot, considering the number of times you tried to kill me. I never tried that. Justin crossed his arm over his chest. You tried to blow me up twice. You'd already fled when I did and I did detonated them. I didn't want you dead. I wanted you to suffer. Convenient that. You wanted him to suffer. Great excuse for screwing up over and over. You just can't do anything right. That's your problem. Shut up. And then, Justin continued, you go and find someone to blame. Shut up. Or what? Justin asked. You're going to try and kill me again? Tristan lunged for Justin, but his brother wasn't there. His father threw his hand in the air. Can't even do that, right? He spun. The two of them were side by side. How did you move so fast? Justin looked around. Fast? No, I wasn't fast. You're slow. Always were. How long did it take until you finally managed to kill something? His father asked. How many beating did I, it take before you finally learned? I was a child. I didn't want to hurt anything. You were made to hurt everything. His father was before him. Tristan stepped back. It took me so long to get that to stick. And how do you repay me? Tristan launched forward, and this time he was the faster one. The knife sunk into his father's chest. He held onto the older, the older Samagin and lowered his muzzle to his ear. The only thing you taught me is to survive at all cost, to remove any obstacle in my way. The rest I learned on my own. That's why you killed father? Justin looked at the body at Tristan's feet. You blamed him because you couldn't learn what he taught, what he had to teach you? He's in my way. He was in my way, Tristan thought. He was keeping me from leaving. You weren't ready, his father sighed. The body was gone. The floor was clean. The knife was gone. The man stood away, shaking his head. I tried so hard with you. I wanted you to make me proud. If only you'd stayed. Can you imagine the things we'd have done together, the three of us? No, you had to snap my neck and go about sowing chaos and destruction. I survive, Tristan said, hearing the bones break, feeling them under his arm. It was difficult to... Under his arm? Uh... Well, okay, I'm... This is not, this is fiction even for him at this point, but. Under his hands. It was difficult to break a Somalian neck, but not impossible. You call that surviving? How many times was it pure luck you didn't die? Never. I've been holding the universe at base of my planning and my action, not because... And here he goes again, blaming something else. Justin was lying on the ground, shaking his head, like the universe ever did anything to you. Tristan pointed to their father. Didn't you listen to anything he taught us? The universe is a harsh place, always looking to destroy us. I never said that. Tristan stared at his father. You did. You're just blaming him for something else you created. He looked from one to the other. He did. I remember it. Like you remember, like your memory is such a great thing. His father scoffed. It had been the coming of the cold season. There had been a fire for warmth, and he'd been falling asleep in his in the, in the heat. His father was telling them how the universe wanted them that dead. That one day it would find them and send people to kill them. That it would never stop. That they would never, ever. That they could never ever give in to the temptation to drop their guards. I never said that, his father said. Fine, Tristan agreed. You said it was the world that would come for us. You always did think small. No, I didn't say any of it. I took care of you. You were an ingrate and ruined everything we could have done. He went to reply, but a new voice stopped him. Don't listen to them. He relaxed at hearing that voice. Everything would be fine if he was here. He turned and smiled at the human standing before him. Alex was dressed in his usual gray and crimson. All they ever did was stand in your way. You're here. You found me. You need to help me get out of here. 
if you kill the guards, you, you can get the remote, shut it down, and we can get out. Alex smiled. You don't need me. You're Tristan, and nothing can stop you. Hearing Alex say that, he could believe it again. All you need is to be patient, and they'll make a mistake. You must always make mistakes. That's what you always told me. You could always count on that. So be patient. Wait and watch. When the time comes, you can kill all of them. He reached for Alex, but he was further than he thought. Alex, don't go. The desperation in his voice scared him. He couldn't be attached. He wouldn't. He didn't need anyone except Alex. I'm here. Alex, Tristan, relax. You did something to me. I know. Alex guided him to the wall. Out of the corner of his eyes, he saw someone. A golden furred Somalian he'd seen before. He was shaking his head sadly, but he was so far away, it might not, it might not be because of Tristan. You need to rest, Alex said. That was true. He sat against the wall. So long as you ignore them and only listen to me, it will all be okay. Tristan smiled and closed his eyes. Yes, so long as Alex was there, it would all be fine. And this concludes Chapter 12 of Fractured Family. If you are enjoying this, please leave a like. If you want to know when the next chapter is going to be up, subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to read the book as well as the others in the series, they are available at all major e-retailers. If you want a different way to support me, that's on my Patreon, where you can also get access to just about everything I've written. And if you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. The links are in the notes. And with that, I shall wish you a good day.